What about vital role do men play in the socialization of children? Well, uh, certainly we play a very important role uh, for the upbringing, um, the values, shaping their values of what, uh, how they should act, their behavior. Uh, I know for my five kids that, that I have, that I'm blessed with, with my wife, uh, Rika, Amen. Uh, who's in the audience, you know, we try to be that example for them. And so shaping their morals, shaping their values, shaping uh, their perspectives uh, in life uh, is very important uh, for, for us mm -hmm. as a family. Amen. Very good. Very good. Uh, Pastor Jeff, Pastor Jeff, same question. What role, you know, uh, you explain it to us uh, from your perspective, what role do men play in the socialization of children? And Dr. Lyles, how much you think about it as well? Well, one of the things that I live by, just the law for my life, is that I believe that fathers love their daughters, yet they raise their sons. And so one of the things that I try to pride myself on when raising my children is at a certain age, I spoke to my wife and I said, listen, you need to raise our daughter. I'm going to raise our son. And the different principles and things that the Lord has showed me I need to establish in this life were not just spiritual principles, but simply life principles. Because in this world, we're not going to be in church all the time. We're going to have to learn how to handle life. And so as a father, you have to have guard those principles and not only guard those principles, make sure they become a critical part of your child's thinking and the way that they live so that they can have the quality life that our doctors got finished talking about. We want all of our children to have a quality life. And, and in fact, we want our children to, to live better than we have lived. So to establish that as men, we need to raise these sons and allow the mothers to raise those daughters and as men, we need to love these daughters. And so that's, I believe, one of the most critical roles that we play in life as it pertains to raising our children. Thank you. Dr. Miles, same thing, same question for you. What role do men play in the socialization of children? Well, children are always watching everything we do hmm. and everything we say. And so what we're doing is we're modeling behavior. And they're going to imitate our behavior right. when they get older. So we need to be cognizant of that in terms of everything we do with kids. Uh, we know that the male tends to identify more with the male and mimic what the male does, and the same thing with the female does. But it's a plus when you have both parents that are involved in raising the child and discussing what measures you're gonna take, how to discipline, and discipline does not always mean corporal punishment. Uh, and, and, and so it's important to have that communication, to have your kids feel as though they, they can talk to you. Uh, I know in our practice, the biggest issues we face is communication issues, relationships. Relationships are very difficult. Mother, daughter, father, son. I mean, it's, it's terribly rampant in terms of issues that they're having out here today. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a whole different world. Uh, so it's, it's very important to model that behavior. It's very important to communicate with them and, and be mindful that uh, you're always being watched and you're always being emanated. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Let me ask you, Doc. We're on that, and this is not on paper, but I'm going to I'm going to ask you this anyway. Is there a is is there a I I, I think we know the answer to it. Is, is there a, a vast difference between the children who have an active relationship with their father versus the ones who do not? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. There there's a void that exists there that they don't have a good relationship. And what they're going to do is they're going to seek out to identify with someone else or to join groups. And that's why you find so many young people who are lost and they end up, and when I say lost, not physically lost, but lost in terms of direction in their life. And they reach out to groups that, uh, that show them affection and show them attention. And it might not be the best place to go uh, for them. Uh, so it's, it's, it's very, very important. Brother Chris, I know you're very active in violent midget football. Uh, each year, 150, 200 kids come out. I'm, I'm probably short with that. Um, and um, we don't see as many fathers as we need to see come out with them. Maybe you see fathers on game day, but, but um, with, with the children there that you see, you're down on the ground with them. You and your coaches are with these children 
the one that fathers actors and the one that what is what are some of the main problems you see or that you might have with those who do not have an active father uh, day to day in their lives? Um, first, I want to uh, touch just the socialization, socialization right. aspect of it. Sure. Um, what I've what I've come to see and notice is how important a two parent household is. Mm -hmm. And I'm not from that. So there's a lot of things coming up in the city, born and raised, that I had to learn on my own. And mother loved, you know, amazingly, mm -hmm. but there was just certain things as a woman, she could not teach a man. So as far as the social socialization aspect of it, I think coming from a two parent home helps tremendously right. with the kids that we have seen at BMFL. Now to um, the question that you asked, what I've seen, we have a lot of single parent households and the kids that show up. In fact, there's that I can even attest to this that it's more mothers <laughs> bringing their child or even their um, daughter, uh, son or daughter to football practices or cheerleading practices. The guys that do show up great, we need them, but there's, there's an absence that I've seen um, um, that fathers aren't there as much. So the ones that are there, great. We embrace them, we allow them to volunteer, we allow them to help out, but we see more women um, at the football field than we do the fathers. Very good. I, I, I could go on for hours about that. How does this affect, never mind, let me ask Daryl a question. We'll yeah. <laughs> Daryl, you're, you're out there with, with him and, and you see that happening. And Daryl, I want to ask you is, is this, um, in your interaction with these these young kids or, or, or young men, what are some of the biggest differences that, that you see dealing with a young man who doesn't have a male presence or a father figure in his life? Um, for me, I've been coaching for, for about nine years now, and uh, you know, I've seen you know, all different types of kids that, you know, that you know that, that struggles, you know, with not with not having a male uh, figure, you know. So during practices, you'll see a kid, you know, you know, having like having like anger problems or. or or being isolated and you know like I see that like me um, I've been a parent for about uh, say nine years now um, I got full custody of my daughter at the age of three so so like with me it was that you know learning getting back to to the Getting back to the foundation of you know the do's and don'ts, and uh, you know I have a nine-year-old daughter, so so it's hard, you know, sometimes try to teach her life, and I'm a guy, you know, but you know, thank God, two years ago, God put um, put my fiance. You know, when I came up, and, and maybe you guys can help me with this, when I came up, every, I came up on a street where everybody had a nuclear family. Every, everybody was married. Everybody was home. I, we didn't even, I didn't even know what really divorce was. I mean, the whole block, some, everybody's dad was home. And so if I didn't respect, or well, to put it this way, if I had a problem with my dad, Mr. Tommy next door wouldn't let me get away with it either. Right. There's always a man's presence, right. always, always. But one time, man, my dad got into it, he got loud. I caught myself leaving the house, and Mr. John was down the street, and I'm walking down the street, he said, come here. And uh, he, he said, look, I don't care what happened, you was wrong. Right. That's your father's house. Right. I don't care what happened. That's right. So if the, a man was always present on our block, like, every, you know, what, what, changed, what happened? And I remember when my daughter Jazz was filming, she went to school, and she was one of few kids whose parents were together in elementary school. One of few. So, so Dr. Wallace and, and, and 
what, what, what happened to our black nuclear family? What happened to our families? Um, is it, was it welfare? Was it, was it, y'all remember Claudine? Was it Claudine? Huh? She got paid to keep James Earl Jones out the house, right? Was it Claudette? I mean, what was it? I, I think there's a lot of things probably that would impact that. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, relationships are very difficult, as I said. Uh, in terms of marriages, 52% of all marriages divorce within the first five to seven years. Has it always been like that, or is that no, no, it's, it's generational. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, back during my grandparents' time, mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember anybody being single. They were always, <laughs> you marry, you marry forever. Uh, right. and now you hear couples, I uh, hear people say, well, we're going to try it. So that says something about the commitment that they're yeah. making. Yeah. They're not making a long-term commitment. They're not seeing this as something that's going to last forever mm -hmm. as we used to do three generations ago. So our values in society uh, toward marriage, toward relationships, has changed significantly. Yeah. Uh, and people are very liberal about it. And we also have the uh, pressures of society. Society is different mm -hmm. than it was back during that time period. Right. No. And these things hurt our family. I know about Absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to say this. Early in my career, you know, I was in law enforcement just like you, but earlier in my career, I discovered the overall scheme, and I'm not being one of those conspiracy theory type persons. I discovered the overall scheme, especially against our community, because I literally was a part of Camden's drug elimination program. I understood the plan was to revitalize the city, and I understood a part of that plan was to go to the women and have them get involved in two-year schoolings, some trade schools and other things of that nature. So once they got involved and they were in trade schools and they were just about complete, that's when we started doing the city sweeps. Who did we lock up? Men. Yeah. And so we locked up men and we left boys on the street and this is when the sons of Malcolm X and all those other gangs started taking over. What were those sons fighting for? They were fighting for their masculinity. And so when there's no man in the house, as much as we see homosexuality and everything on the uprise, there are kids who start out fighting for their masculinity. And when there's no man around, then they start being influenced by the things that are popular more so than they are the things that are right. And so a young man trying to be a man without a man is one of the most difficult things our community has ever seen. And so when we, and, and I'm, I'm going to say it because I was a part of it, when we were locking up, sometimes unjustly, but as a black man, whenever you said something, then you were shut down. We were sometimes unjustly locking up men who only had, you know, a half pound of weed or a dime bag of weed. You get 20, 30 years. How would you like to grow up with 20, 30 years without a father? How would you like to grow up when there's the bully on the block, but you don't have a dad to go home to? suddenly you become a part of the thing that they demand you become a part of and you start receiving their thoughts and now it has bled over into generations where now since i never saw a man in the home why would i want to be in a home with a woman i need to be free because that's the narrative let me knock all these honeys out let me see how many notches i can get in my belt why because that was the narrative on the streets and it was an intended narrative for our narrative rather for our children our young men and our daughters to learn what it is. What was the next narrative that came? You don't need a man. Mm -hmm. You don't need a man. And so, we, sons don't have a father. Late, young ladies are growing up learning you don't need a man because they saw mama do it without a man. And thank God for mama, but that's, that's the poison in the society that has, has caused us to now recognize how important being a father is in our communities. Every one of you that has a child, if you're a man, you need to be a father, not just a daddy. You need to be a present father because you can literally help change the culture and the climate of our communities by just simply being in the home, being with that wife, and being a part of that child's life. Amen. Thank you for that. And, and I, I would encourage, too, and, and, and um, you guys on the panel, um, I hope you agree with me, and some brothers out here might be thinking, well, my kid's grown now. No, he still needs you. She still exactly. needs you to exactly. make a phone call. You may not have been what you should have been then, 
but you can be what they need right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, is Custer doing that? Yes, you can. Um, my mom and dad, like, they've been married ever since I was a kid. And um, when I graduated, they got a divorce. So it was like growing up, like they always fought. Like they, they did nothing but fight and argue every day. So their relationship was so broken that they didn't have time to, you know, like me. For me, I like to have fun. So for me, I was always me. I was always looking forward to my dad, you know, come home. <laughs> you know. He didn't have to say much. I just wanted him just, you know, just to lift me up, say, hey, what's up, son? Yeah. But like, you know, he was so mad that, you know, he just go straight in his room. I'm like, my daddy, thank God, you don't care about me. So, uh, for years, years, for years, for years, I held on to that. I held on to it. And so when I had my daughter, you know, I said, I said, I said, I said, I said I'm not gonna do that, you know? So mm, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man, thank you for that, man. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you. One of the things we need to do also is reach out to others. Uh, we need to not just exist in a cocoon, cocoon right. but we need to reach out and be involved in our community and reaching out to other young men and other young women. I know uh, my wife, before we got married, worked in adoptions. And as you know, we became foster parents. Yeah. And we adopted kids. Yeah. Uh, and my oldest son was in a orphanage in Philadelphia. And I, and I say that because he was older when we adopted him, brought him in, as you know. Mm -hmm. And one of the issues he had was how to relate to females. Yeah, right. Because he was in a home for boys that he grew up with. So his relationship with my wife wasn't in turmoil, but he just didn't know how to relate to her. And so he had to be taught that. And there's a lot of young people out there that need help for us to bring them in if we have the means to do so in terms of helping them as well as just helping ourselves. Thank you. You guys having a good time? Yeah. We'll take a, I, was, I was informed by our executive producer we're going to take a two-minute break. Give God some praise.